Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Panchas and welcome back to Necrophages. I'm afraid that this video is going to be uploaded a little bit late. I'm sorry, I'm way past the deadline, but because as you're probably aware if you read the developer blog, me being part of the VIP team, I had a new version of Endless Legend to test. I mean, we had a new version for a while now, but then there is this yet another new new version and whatnot. So basically for the last during the last 24 hours, I spent like half of it testing. Yeah, because there were a lot of things we had to test and see if they work and whatnot. You know, we are getting close to release, so we need to work hard. I do want this game to be absolutely amazing, so I do not stop, even though I was effing tired yesterday. Wow. Anyway, let's talk about what is happening in this current playthrough, shall we? So, first things first, we've got two beautiful little tiny insignificant cities that do nothing whatsoever. And secondly, we also have a faction quest to consider. I can see that I already started making a nickel drone, but we have recently unlocked a very nice piece of technology that I would love to utilize, and that is the proliferator. Those adorable little fellas, I guess they're not really little, but they are adorable, I don't think you can deny that. They are the staple of a necrophage army, and they basically win games for you, truly, even though Tech is picking, when you look at the stats, they're not a very powerful unit. 37 life on a top tier unit? What? <laughs> you would not see that on any other top tier unit. At least I don't think so. Let me think, let me think, let me think. No, no other top tier unit has this kind of lost life. I'm almost certain now. Yeah, so stats are absolutely abysmally bad. They are. This guy is ranged, by the way, so he doesn't really get into melee combat unless you let him. Which is good, because otherwise he would die really, really quickly. However, he doesn't also deal much damage either. I mean, as you can see, he's got 18 attack and he also has low damage. So, in general, he is not exactly a good fighter. He's got the sweep strike back, but ignore that. He will never use that. I mean, he might use it, but if he does, it probably means that he is dead because he was attacked and when he's attacked, he dies. So, why do you want him in your army? Obviously because of the parasitism ability, which is very powerful. It's very simple. You put this guy behind your front lines, he just spits at your enemies, one by one, different enemy every turn, and those enemies, when they die, they become, you know, dead enemies. But, from those dead enemies, some necrophages are found. To be more precise, foragers. And while those foragers may not be exactly what you want, maybe you want an army of necrodrons or whatever, those foragers can create an army. And I do mean it. You kill an enemy, imagine this, you have an army, like six of your units, six of the enemy units. You fight, most of your units die, most of the enemy units die, but then you can fight again because wah -ba bam out of all the killed enemy units, you get a free forager, which is a pretty big deal. Sure, foragers are not the best unit, but they are pretty good at what they do, and they can and they can kill quite nicely. They can dis uh, disease other types of creatures. It's nice. So proliferators, I think you can imagine how crazy it can get in late game. You can just create entire armies, and I do mean armies in plural. plural. Let's try and say this again. Plural. I said this. So yeah, those guys are pretty scary. Pretty nice to have and adorable too. So what do I want to give them? Do I want to give them more defense? No. Do I want to give them more initiative? Possibly, but not really. All I need to do is just make sure that their initiative is higher than the Necrodons initiative, and it will be because Necrodons have absolutely horrible initiative. Now the Proliferators will be behind my Foragers, but this is okay. I just need them to be before my Necrodons. In case you're wondering why, it's very simple. It's the Necrodons that will deal the killing blow to the enemy, most likely. And the proliferators just need to infect the enemy before the enemy dies. They cannot infect bodies that are already deceased. So there is that. Alrighty then. So I do not need to equip those guys with any armor. This way those guys will remain as cheap as they are. Even though 120 industry is not cheap by any means. Those guys are expensive. As for weapon, same story really. I could equip them with tier 2 weapon. But honestly, what is the point? There is no point. In fact, the lower tier weapon gives me more initiative for some reason. Which is actually fairly nice. Oh, no, that's the same tier weapon. It's This one is a mega one, this one is this. But either way, same deal applies. I do not need to equip those guys with better weapon. They will deal barely any damage either way. But actually, they will deal some damage. 
So just for this reason alone, I will give them a weapon. Besides, this Mega Wand also gives me a regeneration. And regeneration just gives you plus level 2 that gives you 2. No, 4. Oh, that's better than I thought. 4 life after the end of the round. Which, let's be honest, is worthless. Those guys will die anyway. And 4 life each round is nothing whatsoever. So, yeah. But it is a nice looking tail that this guy now has. So I'm going to keep this uh, weapon and... Enjoy the extra added damage. Alternatively, I could go for this weapon, which would give me more damage, actually. I might go for that. I lose regeneration, but I wouldn't lose uh, use regeneration anyway. And I don't care too much about initiative. But more damage? Yeah, uh, I can take more damage. But this is so much more expensive now. And I don't need those guys to deal damage. I need them to infect the enemy units. So you know what? Just basic equipment, please. That is good enough. So, with that said, let's queue up one of those guys. And let's add one more Forager as well for good measure. I'll use the Forager to shield the Necodrion, which will attack the horses. Actually, there are three horses in there already. Let's get two Necodrions before I tag them. I do not want to make more Foragers purely because I'll soon start swimming in Foragers, and I do mean swimming, so I do not need more of them. I'll obviously also attach a hero as a general to this army that I'm going to send to kill the horses, so that I'll have better chance of, of chances of success. Man, I have to admit, I need to keep an eye on myself because after this much testing that I've done, I'm getting a little bit confused on what changes are implemented yet and what changes are not. Alrighty then, inspect. Hero has gained an additional level, that's good. He is going to be my governor, so I'm obviously going to give him unit cost reduction, which is a very, very important and powerful ability. Unfortunately, he is in the wrong city, which is not exactly ideal. Did I assign him just recently? I think I did, didn't I? Yes, indeed I did. That was a mistake, probably. But since it is done already, I'm not going to cry too much about it. Now, let's have a quick look here. I do not like the way this goes. Those units take way too long to be created, so let us change the population around a little bit. Sure, now it takes me more time to actually grow, but I don't care this much either. How are we doing on the food front? One more unit killed and I'll have some food. Which is nice and... Do I have all those spices? Really? Wow. You know what, since I have this many spices, I see no reason not to activate some of them because, quite frankly, I could use some extra spices. It gives me a nice food boost and this way, look, extra two talents for new population even without anybody working on food. Of course, I can make better use of spices if I move my population like this. And I might just do it Purely to get myself new population on the next turn, and then I'll move my population back into industry. Because I do need to have this army as quickly as humanly possible. In terms of Empire Plan, I will not make a single change. I do like the extra industry cost reduction on units. It's a very useful ability to have. I do not think you can disagree on that one. And Malaysia is just doing its thing, and so far it's going rather well. Alright, good for now. Let's go ahead and finish this turn and see how things are. I didn't make myself any water for crying out loud. I really, really wanted to take a sip of water right now. Oh well. I guess I can survive. <laughs> Although it's an added thing for me now. Uh, that I'll wait for, for when I end this video cast. By which I mean I need to end this video cast as quickly as possible because it's late already. So now I have another reason to end it early because I need to drink some water. Yeah, logic. I don't have it. Anyway, Cannon Fodder has been researched very nice. Now I can have bigger... No, no. Cheaper armies, not bigger armies. I could make myself have bigger armies as well. Question is, do I want to do this right now? <sighs> Let me think about exactly what I need in this situation. Am I going to have really large armies anytime soon? It would take me some time, but I'm not sure if there's any other technology that I would rather have at this point in time. That said... Having the canal systems already will probably be fairly useful. Although we are getting close to the winter season, soon enough it will be winter. Knowing my luck, it will be sooner rather than later. I feel like getting this technology right now could be possibly a mistake. I would much rather start researching it during winter so that I can get a full benefit of it. Otherwise, I might finish researching it like 110 before winter and then what's the point of having it? I guess it does take some time to create the canal system in your city, but it doesn't take too long. It's only 250 industry after all. So instead, let us go for something else. I do not have any resources as of yet, so I have no use of any weapons made out of glass steel or titanium. So what I can do is just increase the amount of the size of my armies. Like, like I talked about this before, so I guess I will do it. 
Will I? Yeah, I will. In the future when I... Actually, I can unlock the marketplace. And this might be beneficial because having the aquaculture science is pretty good. But you do need glass steel. For... Oh, wait. I will have glass steel. Because there's glass steel right there. Okay, then. Never mind. Sorry, I'm a little bit confused today, I guess. But it doesn't matter as long as we're doing okay. And I believe that we will be doing quite fine as soon as I start killing people. Because this is the activity that I and probably all of us enjoy the most, isn't it? Yes, it most certainly is. Alright, you know. Man, I really need a sip of water. Can I pause the video cast just for one second? Please? Please? I will. Be right back. Wait, that, that's a screenshot. That's not the pause button. Be right back. Ah, I'm back. You have no idea how a single, or several to be more precise, sip of water can help a man and change a man. I feel much more relaxed now, calm, and I know exactly what to show you this video cast. That's not to say that I didn't know before, but now I know exactly when and what format and what happens after the other thing and what not. Basically, everything seems much clearer for me now. So first things first, let's level up a hero. Now, something that I probably should mention is that when I started recording this series, I had a different mindset about the low master heroes than I have now. Previously, I would always go this path and max out Battle Heaven ASAP. I really liked this idea because it's a very nice warmonger thing to do. Nowadays, what I do more commonly is actually I try to get no idle hands and max out the last reserves as soon as possible for the extra life on my units. There are several reasons for this, but generally speaking, I found my units needing the extra life more often than needing extra damage. However, because firstly I started going this uh, branch already and secondly because I'm planning on using plenty of glass cannon type of units I'll continue going up this route and all the way into battle him and max it out as soon as possible because again glass cannons need, need offense more than they need defense However, in the future if you were to play with some kind of other unit composition or other faction or other anything I would argue that having extra life is probably a better bet for you because from what I have seen the changes or the difference between one hit kill or two hit kill you know this kind of things are actually very visible when you have the extra life which is kind of obvious but I mean when you have to choose no 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 when you have to choose between one of those two abilities I found the life to be more useful that's just personal experience over the last couple of days so anyway that's our hero leveling up, that's very nice, we made that little something, that's a necrodon, it is indeed a little something, it's delicious as well, if you eat it with a bit of pepper and some chili sauce. And additionally we are working on proliferators. The problem is, right now our production, even with all population on the industry and a hero and whatnot, our production is not exactly what I would call ideal or stunningly quick, unfortunately. And it is a fairly big problem because when we look at the status screen, you can see that military-wise, the Broker Lords are currently much, much more powerful than we are. Obviously, this will change very, very quickly after we create a couple of extra units and they will soon enough attack them. Don't worry, I promise you that. I didn't start my timer. Whatever. But the problem is right now we are a little bit weaker. So what I want to do is because I do not yet have the army to attack the enemy and I will not in the near future. After creating this little army that I will swap out the Ursus once and for all, I'm going to just go ahead and make another settler and settle over here. Two reasons. One, I really really do need to have this titanium, not even for weapons and armor, because not really soon, but sooner enough I will gain access to some better stuff. <clears throat> But titanium is actually very useful. There are a lot of structures nowadays that actually require you to have titanium. So it is actually all around a useful resource that you can have. And some accessories made of titanium are useful even in late game, even if you get them in the early game. So it's not a resource that you can really ignore or forget. It's actually very, very useful. And if you have too much of it, you can sell it quite nicely on the marketplace as well. So there is that. Is there anything else I need to do this turn? Highly unlikely, but let's have a quick look at my other city. I guess I can fill up the build, the queue. The queue? Construction queue, yeah, that's what I meant to say, actually. So let us do that. I do want to start making, generating some extra glass steel, just for the future. There are also some structures that require glass steel, and I might, might research some glass steel weapons and give them to my necrodons if I have enough glass steel. But a single extractor might not be enough for an entire army, so I'll most likely end up using glass steel for structures alone. 
After that, what will I go for? Most likely just extra dust and extra science. Dust, well, let's just say the more I play this game, the more I feel like dust is more and more necessary to have as much of it in a bank as possible. Again, right now it doesn't feel this way because this stat I got very lucky. The terrain I'm on, it has a ton of dust, but this is a rare situation. The last several games I played, I did not have as much dust in my southern region. And in mid and the late game even more so, once you start creating those giant armies, they just soak up so much of your dust so quickly. You need to stockpile on your dust in early game so that you have it for later. I, I mean it. That's why even though I oftentimes have the chance, I actually do not buy out units of structures. Sure, it does give you a nice little boost, but more often than not, I actually find myself needing the extra dust to be in my bank for the times when my income is negative. And sometimes you cannot really avoid it. You have to take it if you want to have a large army ready for combat. And because I'm a warmonger, I almost always do. Alrighty then. I will probably try and go for the glass steel weapons just in case I do end up having enough of it. It is possible that I'll get some from a quest. Is there actually a quest that will give me glass steel? Maybe, if I remember correctly, the second objective in the faction quest for Necrophages gives you a random reward, I think. Is it random? Yeah, I think this one is random still and the next one isn't. Or it's the other way around. Either way, if it is the random award, it's quite possible that this will be glass steel. It's not likely really, but it is possible. So let's go for those weapons, I might make good use of them later. And after that, I guess, nah, I still will not need my extra industry really. What will I need? What do I truly actually need? You know what I will need? I will need Imperial Coinage. For pure simple reason, it's because of my faction quest, which will require me to have some luxuries and strategic resources that I may not have access to at that point in time, so I may have to buy them. So let's go ahead and grab this thing as well. Alright, Meritocratic Promotion is ready. Now I can have really nice, really big and powerful armies, which I enjoy. Now, can I unassign my other hero? Yes, I can. Now, what I will do might m make my army be leaderless when I actually move out to kill the Ursus, but it is very important because what I'm going to do is increase the production, or rather lower the production cost of those of my units in the city so that I can make more of them faster. It's actually very important because I cannot spare any time on finishing my faction quest, cleaning this area, settling here, and then attacking the enemy. The longer I wait, the more powerful the AI will get. Mark my words. AI on unless, even though AI right now is not really an entirely difficult opponent to fight, it still can, you know, uh, what's the word for that? Get out of control, that's not the word I was looking for, but it's good enough. Get out of control if you leave it alone. Same thing goes in multiplayer. Leave a player alone, he will probably kill you if he has the chance, and he might indeed just have the right chance if you simply do not do anything about an enemy. It is never smart to just leave somebody alone, especially if you know that you are going to be playing as a warmonger. So we're going to try and build our army as quickly as possible. Anything I want to do in this city, not exactly, although because I'm not really in a hurry in the city, I might actually go ahead and increase the food production. Why not? Let's do just that. Meanwhile, Rachel is growing nicely. New forage in the four tens. Can I possibly take out the Ursus village with just three units without a hero? Single proliferator and two Necrodons versus three Ursus. Those are upgraded Necrodons, of yes, that's true. But these are Ursus, they are tough, and without a meat shield it might be a risk. Tell you what, in multiplayer I would probably not take this risk. And I'll just simply wait for the Forager, it's okay, if I wait a little bit longer not much will happen. And I do not really gain all that much for finishing my faction quest anyway. But, it is not multiplayer, it is single player, and I'm recording a video cast which is supposed to be fun. And what is fun? Fun is doing silly little things, experimenting, and oh boy, there is another Rambler. So, I will kill this guy, but I cannot attack those guys afterwards, because I will probably take some damage. But actually, I will kill him and get a Forager, this is perfect! Yeah, my subconsciousness is smarter than my consciousness is. That was a good idea to attack, thank you, brain. No problem. So, let's wait for this turn to end, that took a while, that's strange. Let's wait for the turn to end and go ahead and attack this horribly confused Rumbler who keeps walking back and forth, back and forth, it doesn't matter. He is going to die any second now. And just because I like to watch my enemies die, let's go ahead and go into manual. 
I'm lying. I mean, I do like to watch my enemies die, but I also just want to see my kids little fella in action. So let's do just that. Now, the Rambler, ooh, he will attack first, and he does have this beam ability, which is a little bit nasty. So what I'm going to do is make sure that he cannot use it on me. Now, I do not remember the range on proliferators, I'll be entirely honest with you. It's either 2 or 3, but I'm afraid it might be 2. But in the event it is actually 3, I'll move the Rambler back and hope that it actually is. And I'll tell him to keep position, because this Rambler can only move to this tower at most, so I'll just keep my units out of his range and then move in for the kill. I like this idea. So let's go ahead and ready up and make sure that this guy does not move an inch. And then this guy will probably move to this tower, at least I would do this. So you go over here, you go over here. And let's also give you an order to attack this guy as well. Actually, it is a little bit risky because I'll still have the problem with the beam of this guy. But at the same time, if I simply move my proliferator back to this tower, he'll be safe from the beam. So it's all good. Alright, let's go ahead and start the battle. It is a range of two. Okay. So I could not attack this guy just then, but it's okay, because I'm pretty sure I will not be able to kill around Blair in a single turn, even with... That was unexpected. <laughs> okay then, well, I guess things went rather well, except now I don't actually have my forager. But since this battle was this easy, you know what? I'm actually just going to go ahead and next turn attack those guys, because wow, he went down so quickly! This is insane. Oh, it feels so nice. You have no idea. All right, so. Wow, my units are actually powerful. This feels nice, man. It's really ni really a nice feeling. So, anyway. I'm actually being attacked by two rumblers, no less. All right, I guess this time maybe we'll actually see my proliferator in action. So, but before I do, let's have a quick look at my city. Because something happened that I wanted to take a look at, but I don't remember what it was. What was it, actually? I really don't remember, which is a little bit annoying, whatever. Let's start making this cellar right away. I don't think I'll need this forager in the end, but actually, I guess we can determine by just continuing with our battle. So again, same deal. Those guys, two movement. I cannot be too close or else they'll beam me to death. You go over here. Actually, there's no point in you being here because you will not have range anyway. So let's just stand here and make a cool looking pose, I guess. All right, good to go. Let's let those guys move ahead. You stay where you are, do not move an inch. You move to this tile, you move to this tile, and be one happy family. Also, actually, once you move, I want you to stay there as well. Alrighty then. Let's go ahead and see what is happening. Now, my proliferator will use an ability on my own units, uh, but I have no idea what this ability is. <laughs> I'll be entirely honest with you. He's not supposed to be using abilities on friendly units, but apparently he does. Which is a little bit weird, but I guess it's not really a big issue now, is it? So those guys are going down really quickly. It's actually kind of crazy. I'm starting to think that maybe I should have spared one of them just to let my proliferator attack. Oh no, this guy actually survived. I guess I got a critical strike before, uh, before twice in a row, which is why this guy went down so quickly. All right, you attack him. I hope that you are in range. Actually, that's free, but maybe, I don't know. I hope you are in range. If you're not, then just kill him anyway. All right, let's go for that. Go ahead and launch and yeah, he does have free range. Huh, interesting, why didn't he attack before? Anyway, this guy is now parasited, so after the end of this battle, I'll gain a free necrophage. Necro... not necrophage, a necro... not necromorph. A forager, that's the word I was looking for. So there is that, but the important thing about uh, that I meant to talk about beforehand, and there's the forager. I got him as my little pet from killing the enemy and eating him from inside. But the thing I did want to talk about is this. Right now, as you can see, I have a Recycled Stock power, out, which is just a power of corpses that I can now eat. Thing is, I do think, I really believe, I might be wrong, but I do think that it might be changed before release, that this ability will be nerfed. Right now, it does seem a little bit ridiculous, and if anything, I'm a person that encourages to nerf Necrophages a little bit. So let us assume they will be nerfed in the future just for the sake of your education and making things a little bit more challenging for me, shall we? So what I'll do is only use a, a stockpile if I have at the very least two of them and my mouse stopped working. Seriously? There we go. No, no. Yeah, the connection between my mouse and my computer is a little bit damaged, so sometimes it's... Alright, technical difficulties, I guess. I'll be right back. Man, that's unlucky. 
Oh, now it seems to be working. Man, that's just kind of like I need to buy a new mouse. Anyway, do I still dare to attack the enemy? Yes, I... How did my Pernivator get damaged? When? Did the enemy beam attack me? I don't remember that. How did he get so... Whatever. Let's attack anyway. I will not let him be damaged again. So now I have an army of four units and the enemy is so lonely in here. Let's attack and I should be able to crush the enemy. It's actually strange. My Necrodrones are also quite badly damaged. But I think they were actually damaged. I'm, the one thing I am truly confused about is my Proliferator because he was not damaged. Unless I'm actually, I don't know, high or something and I cannot tell dream from reality. But other than that, I'm pretty sure I'm not making this app. I mean, I have video footage that proves that I'm not crazy. I hope. Anyway, let's. this is going to be a nasty battle. A really nasty battle. The enemy has the high ground and whatnot. Let's just pull back a little bit and make the enemy come to me, shall we? Otherwise, I would be fairly dumb by letting the enemy just marry me one by one on those steps. So this guy can walk forward and beam me to death, which I'm not a big fan of. So let's move backwards even more so. And now I should be safe. So first things first, you do say you stay here, you do say you also stay here, and then the two of you attack the one rumbler that goes... <coughs> Sorry! Sorry about that. <clears throat> I didn't feel that coming. I'm really sorry. Anyway, this rumbler is going to walk forward the most, and he's got the initiative to do it as well, so let's focus on this guy and try to kill him early, if at all possible. Hopefully... My Necrodons will know where to stand. Actually, I don't trust them with that, so let's help them stand. You stand here, you stand here. Now, the problem with that is I am assuming that this Rumbler will walk over here. If he does and then he walks like over here, then this Necrodon will probably do something stupid like fly backwards or something because it will not understand how it's possible, how it can move here and attack the enemy. It's a little problem that will need to be resolved, unfortunately. Now, my Proliferator is just... Smiling for the camera, except it's a Necrodon. I don't really get why he's doing... Oh, he moved here. This is going to be a problem. But the Proliferator did it regardless, so I guess whatever. Now my Necrodon, the first Necrodon, is going to do exactly what I told it to, which is nice. So, and the enemy died in a single hit? Yes, he did. He certainly did. That was an overkill, which I enjoyed. And the second Necrodon, yeah, he just flew over here. I guess it didn't have enough movement. No, it did have enough movement. It was there. Yeah, it could have easily attacked the enemy, but it focused on one of my orders and it tried to fulfill it. Actually, this time it was nice because it, this Necrodron, technically speaking, did fulfill my order in the end. So this is okay. Sometimes they do some, just some random stupid stuff, though. Alright, which Rumbler do I want to attack first? Well, the important thing is where do I not want the beam to go? And I don't want this Rumbler to beam me, because if he does beam me, then he'll kill this Necrodron. If this Rumbler attacks my Forager and beams me, then this Necrodron will be damaged, but it will not be killed, at least I don't think it will. So let's just go for that. And you just uh, also spit at one of those guys, I guess it doesn't matter which one. Uh, let's spit at the one with more health, I guess, why not. And you have your orders. Actually, everybody just focus on this guy. Why not? All right, let's do just that. Very, very nice. Have a little spit. And we can let this battle play out in the background as we are focusing on the rest of our empire. So, as for the city, is there anything in particular I need to do? No, I'm trying to get the city out as quickly as possible. But I can sacrifice a bit of population to start working a little bit harder on science. Because science-wise, I'm fairly certain that I'm quite a bit behind. And I need to work on that if at all possible. It's a bit distracting to have this battle in the background, do you know? Because I kind of like to watch battles and whatnot. Yeah. Anyway, so one Rumbler is dead and this will be a free Necro fate for me. I mean, Forager. Forager for me. So everybody just please kill this guy and stun lock him if possible so that he doesn't kill my Proliferator. Thank you very much. Proliferator goes first. Parasites the enemy. Very nice. This will be a Forager now. And I can ignore this battle for the time being. I was also attacked somewhere else, wasn't I? Oh no, this was the battle that I just won. Alright. So soon enough we'll have more influence options. I mean, empire plan options. And forager gain extra level, which is, I guess, nice. How is Malaysia doing? It finished all its constructions, which is nice. I can now create another bit of a city. Which, in fact, I will do. I could, however, focus on an army instead. Which I will do more gladly, because I do need to start attacking the enemy AI. Those Brokolos, they are getting out of control really quickly. Oh, the battle is over, how nice. 
Those Brokenauts are getting out of control really quickly and I do not like it. Not one bit. Mm, I like this better. So I need to attack them as quickly as possible and with two cities producing military units at a fast pace I'll be able to do it much much better. Alright, so now this is actually a bug. I mean, right now you do not see this bug because I actually do have the meritocratic promotion. But before, if I didn't have it, I would still have the extra forages in my army. Even though the maximum army size would actually be 4, I would have 6 out of 4 units in my army. This is a bug, it will probably get fixed, but I shouldn't actually say this now because now you can abuse it. Whatever, you probably are aware of this issue anyway. It will be fixed one day, I bet. So, yeah, there we go. Now I have a nice army and I fulfilled my faction quest, which I actually didn't fulfill it yet. I need to go to the temple ruins as well and search for it. Alright, I guess I can do that. And because I'm not ready to attack the enemy units just yet, I mean, broken lots, I'll just go ahead and make my way over there slowly but surely, destroying this village in the process because why not, let's kill some Hyrenas. In the meantime, this video cast has been long enough and I really, really, really need to start uploading it ASAP. So, ladies and gentlemen, it was Panchasu, also known as the Mighty Mix Bummer. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> You're a funny man. And I'll see you online.